Hey guys, in this video we'll go through a few examples of how to make HTTP post requests from React using the Fetch API. The examples are from this tutorial that I'll link to in the video description. We'll go through each one and run it in a local project to see how it works. First, making a post request with a JSON body from a React class component, then from a React hooks component, then using async await, then with error handling, and finally with setting HTTP headers. The URL used for testing is to a fake online REST API at jsonplaceholder.com. When posting data to the slash posts route of the API, it responds back with the contents of the request body along with an ID property, which we'll display within our React component. Okay, let's get started. Jumping over to the project in Visual Studio Code, this is our bare bones uh, React project which just has a single app component that at the moment just displays a title. I have it running over here in the browser. Alright, so it's ready for us to start with the first example. So we're doing a simple post request with a JSON body. I'll just copy that out from here and then explain it as I'm going along once it's in the project. Alright, so the request is being done from within the component did mount lifecycle hook of a React class based component. The request, so when you're making a fetch request, the first parameter is the URL that you're hitting. It's the JSON placeholder fake API slash posts route. And the second parameter is a request options object. By default, a fetch request method is get. So for a post request, you need to set the method to post. Uh, we're making, we're sending JSON data, so uh, we need to set the content type to application JSON, and then the body needs to be a stringified JSON object, and this is the actual post body. So we're passing in the an object with the title property of React post request example. Now the fetch function returns a promise with a response which uh, to get the body of the response we call dot JSON, the dot JSON method which returns another promise um, that then gives access to the actual body of the response in the callback to that promise so uh, within the second second promise dot then we call this dot set state and as I mentioned before the uh, Fake API returns an ID property, so we get that data.id and we assign it to a local post ID state property. So first thing is to actually create that state property in our component. Set this dot state. And initialize it to null. And then we want to display that post ID in our render method. Okay, that should be all we need to do. And it should have automatically refreshed in the browser, so if I go back. And there you go. We can see the post request it succeeded and it's returned the ID of 101, which is displayed in the component. All right, moving on to the next example is uh, making the same request but converting our component to a React Hooks component. So instead of running the fetch request from within component did mount, we'll change our class-based component to a React Hooks component, which is a function component. And instead of having a constructor and setting state in there, we'll use the use state and use effect hooks. I won't go too much into the details about how React Hooks works because there's plenty online about that. 
that I'll just do the conversion here to uh, stay focused on making the actual HTTP requests from React. Right, so setting the state variable. Just use state, initialize it to null. And get rid of the constructor. Going back, I'll copy the use effect function, use effect hook rather, and we can replace component did mount with our use effect hook. And as I've said in the comment here, by passing a empty second parameter, empty array as a second parameter to a use effect hook, that use effect callback is only run when the component mounts, which makes it behave just like a component did mount method in classes. So we can see that the actual fetch request is working exactly the same way, except it's calling set post ID instead of this dot set state to set our state variable. And we no longer need a render method as a function component simply returns the template that it's uh, that it's rendering. Now if I save that, that should be done now. And I'll just update the label since the data is the same, just so we can see the update in the UI. Okay, there we can see that the UI is updated and the request is the same. Okay, going back to the next example using async await. Okay, the example in the post is uh, using a class-based component with the component in mount method. I'll, stick, I'll st stay with the uh, React Hooks component that we've got. It'll just be a very minor, minor difference between the two. So I'll go back to the project here and convert this call to using async await. Uh, to be able to use the await keyword with the fetch call, we need to make the wrapper function an async function by adding the async keyword to it. And then we can, instead of using the promise.then callback, we can say const response equals await fetch request options, then const data equals await response.json. Simply call set post ID. That should be it. And I'll change the label again so we can see the update in the UI. Save and go back and check. Okay, and that's worked. So moving on to the next example. Adding error handling. Okay, again, this was done in the example with a class-based component, but we'll uh, stick with our React Hooks component, and I'll just copy this over and change the state setting to use our hooks to set the state instead of the this.setState call. In this example, we want to display an error message if there was an issue with the post request at all. So I've changed the request URL to be an invalid URL to force an, an error to happen. And I've added the catch block down here, which calls, which sets an error message state variable to the error. So I'll change that set error. First, I'll create a error state property error message set error message set error message to string And 
that's it. That's it again. That it doesn't do. Okay, now the reason for the extra check in this then is because fetch natively will throw an error if there is a network error for the request. So if there is a problem connecting to the server, but if there is a HTTP response error, like a 400 or a 500 error returned, then fetch will treat the request as successful and still go into um, the dot then um, successful successful uh, callback. The way to check if there has been an HTTP error is to check the OK property of the response. In this case I want it to still fall into the catch block so what I'm doing is if the, if there will, if the response is not OK, so if there's a 400 or 500 error, I'm checking if there is a, I'm getting an error message either from the response body or if there isn't one I'm defaulting to the response status and uh, then returning a promise.reject with that error which then causes that to fall into the catch block and this allows us to have a single catch block for setting the error message and logging it out rather than having duplicated error message, uh, error message code in multiple places for different types of error situations. Uh, finally, I will add an extra label down here for the error. Save, and that should be all we need to do. Check in. Okay, now we can see that we've got a 404 response in the error, which is the response status, and the invalid URL, which is the response there. If we look in the console, we can see there was an error that was logged, which was also handled in the catch block. Okay, going back. Now, final example is setting HTTP headers. Uh, now, we're already actually setting a HTTP header with the content type application JSON but I'll use this to set an extra custom HTTP header just to uh, illustrate the example. So if we wanted to set an extra custom HTTP header, we would just add it to this headers object. So JSON test, one, two, three. And that headers property of the request options is already being passed in as the second parameter to fetch, so if I save that, which should be all I need to do, jump back to the browser. And the request still returns an error as expected because of the invalid URL, but if we look at the headers sent, we should be able to see there's our custom header, JSON test123, so that has worked. Okay, that's all of the examples. So that is how you send HTTP post requests from React using Fetch. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel below. Okay, cheers.